So we've spent the last week or two working on basics again, um, defining what we're putting in when we create a variable, what's required, uh, what's required when we write a method, and how to correctly write if else statements. So now we're going to start uh, using some of these terms and start to write uh, a couple games where we can apply what we learned. So I created a new project and I used um, the 3D with extras. So let's take a look at that. First of all, um, I'm using 2019.4 Unity, the long-term solution. Um, I haven't got up to 2020 yet. I don't know if that one of those is LTS, but I'll have to check and see. And then when I created it new, I used 3D with extras. And again, make sure you give it a name and make sure you know where you put it because you're going to be backing it up. If you don't back it up, it's not going to uh, be there when you <clears throat> have the hard disk cleaned, which you do every week or two to get rid of uh, all the large games we're building and free up space for like uh, six classes to use those computers. So um, give it a good name. I think I called my character and we're using this one, 3D with extras. Okay, so I've already created that. And let's see sort of what it looks like when we bring it up. So it comes up with uh, this partially built building. Uh, that's what it comes with. And some of these little assets and stuff. Um, And we're just going to use a few of them just to uh, just to sort of make our game look a little more realistic. And we'll probably add some objects to it. Now, speaking of which, um, I created a plane. And I called it ground. So uh, game object, 3D object, um, plane. And mine is, I made it three by three by three. You know what? I think I'm going to make it like five by five. By five, I want it big. Um, and we're going to go ahead and um, put some other objects inside here. And I moved mine down 0.2. So if I zoom in on it, you can see it's right below the. Um, object that comes the uh, uh, partially built house that comes with the uh, scene. So this is the sample scene that comes with the 3D um, with extras when we choose that. So um, create a plane, uh, mine I reset. So I hit reset up here and I made mine zero and then I moved it down. Just negative two seems to put it right below that thing there. Make sure you rename it ground. So once you create an object, you don't leave it with the name Unity gives it, you recreate it. So I created that. And then I created uh, my player. So the game object, uh, 3D object. And I created a uh, capsule. But you could create a sphere, uh, if a cube would work. Something that can move easily around the game. Sphere or capsule. Cylinder might work also. And when you do create it, make sure you rename it um, player. 
So this is my player. Let me move him out a little bit. Okay, so I resized him. No, I didn't. I think I resized the uh, building a little bit. But my player is still the 1-1-1. One, one, one. Um, and I just sort of position him on the floor. And this really doesn't matter because he's on the floor a little bit to the side. And I kept the scale 1-1-1. One, one, one. I may increase that as we go through the thing or maybe decrease it. Okay, so I didn't like the camera that came with the game. And so um, I didn't like the angle it was set. So I deleted it. I went up and you know highlighted the main camera and right clicked and I deleted it. Then I got this position on my player by double clicking on the player and you know getting where I like to. And I did game object, camera, and then immediately game object align with you. And it'll align that camera right with your uh, with your player. And I think these are like spotlights here. We'll check those out a little bit later um, in the game. So um, go ahead and create your new camera. And then the other thing you're gonna do is drag the camera into the player. So once you create that new camera, you're just going to drag him down into the player right there, and then he'll uh, be underneath the player. That means it's a child of the player. The parent, the player is the parent, and the camera is the child. Meaning, wherever you move the uh, player, the camera is going to follow. It's also you can see it's nested underneath. Now notice. Um, this is put together pretty neatly because we can just flip this button right here and flip that, and that's what we want. A nice, clean interface. Uh, the same with the assets. Everything has a folder. And it comes with these folders. Even it comes with a material folder. Okay, so uh, one of the first things I did is I created some materials. I probably should have renamed these, you know, like come here and named it like red or something, but I didn't. Anyway, so we're gonna create some materials. I have material on my uh, ground and I have a material on my um, player. And since I don't want them the same, I think I'll create a new material. So create material. And in this case, this is a little different with the 3D with extras. I had to click on this little thing there, that little pen, and then I clicked on this. And then it came up and I sort of want to get like a yellow or gold. Something like that. Okay. And then I'm going to drag that on my player. That sounds a little bit better. I don't want or, uh, purple with purple, purple with red. So, you know, create whatever color you want. Um, you click on this, click on this in here. And then when you do click over here and that'll be double click on here, it'll get your, it'll get your uh, color in there. I would put a color on your ground and your uh, uh, color on your um, player. And then what we want to do is we want to, we're going to use the character controller. This is the first time we've used it. Uh, we've been using rigid body. So we're going to experiment with the character controller and see how it differs. Um, they're similar, but uh, I don't think the character controller interacts with the uh, uh, environment as well or uh, physics as well, but we'll find out. But it's a little bit easier to write than you do with the, uh, um, with the rigid body. Okay, so that means we created a script. So back, scripts, and then right click, create C sharp script. I call mine mouse view. So I created a new script. I renamed it mouse view uh, immediately because basically when we're done here, 
as I move my mouse, I can see around me, which is pretty cool. We haven't done that before. Um, and also I'm going to, um, in the next lesson, so you can, you can look up above too. So if you move left and right, you twirl around. If you move back and forth, you can see up above the uh, object. So let's take a look at um, that script. Okay, first of all, it, it better have the name that you just named it, of course. Now, you can see we're already starting off with a, um, a variable. And you should already know from what we just did, we're gonna be able to control it in the game. It's a decimal, even though I didn't, I don't have to make it a decimal, but I have the option to make it a decimal. And I'm calling it mouse look. So it's gonna control the sensitivity or speed of my mouse. I don't wanna to be touching the mouse that they start spinning around mixing a, making us dizzy. And so uh, we're already using one of those variables. And that way if it, you know, we can maybe make this 50 if we're moving too fast or if it's too slow, we can change it and control that speed of that mouse as we start to look around our world. Let's drop down a little bit and we'll come back up here. So basically we wanna get the uh, axis for mouse X. And this is why we're using, when I tell you, you wanna be a Unity programmer because Unity is different. Unity has its own system of collections. <coughs> so we have edit, project settings, and under um, axis, there's a mouse X and a mouse Y. So we can refer to mouse X and mouse Y. And it shows the sensitivity and, the, um, and we can change all this if we wanted to. It's mouse movement and it's along the X axis, okay? So that's our mouse X and then we have mouse Y. So let's go back to our script. So we're gonna use a float just in case we wanna, you know, fine tune this thing. Uh, mouse X, we're getting that straight from the uh, input uh, manager. And that's gonna equal, we're gonna get the axis from mouse X um, moving around. And we wanna use our mouse look, we're gonna take our speed so we're getting the axis and as we start to move around um, our thing and look around us, um, we also wanna have time that delta time. So we'll multiply times the speed, which is hundred right now, but it's public, we can change it in the game. And then we wanna have the same frame rate. So that's the uh, time between um, update, update uh, every time the computer updates, this is that time between then. And we wanna make sure it's, um, if your computer is super fast or your computer is a little bit slower, it's playing at the same rate. So it's going to adjust that. So this is all I'm doing right now. We'll do this other one in the next lesson. So um, I want to go ahead and grab that mouse X, uh, uh, get that mouse X uh, vertical, and I'm going to write it. I'm, I'm creating sort of a variable there, right? Which I'm going to use. So um, I'm telling you what it is on here. And then um, I need to get that um, transform. So that means I need to go grab a hold of my player and be able to uh, get the transform of that player. So I'm gonna get all those transforms, which of course are the uh, position, rotation, and scale. In this case, I'm gonna be using rotation. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and get that so I can use it. I'm gonna get the all the transformation for that um, player I'm gonna be using. And so then I'm going to um, use that transform. I'm gonna rotate it on the uh, vector three. And this does say up, sort of confusing. So I'm actually using the, uh, the Y axis, if you will. Um, to um, make this thing move. So that means it's rotating like this. So it says Y, 
you know, you know x is this way, y is that way. But I'm rotating um, up and not uh, like across because I, it's, I want the thing rotating around this y axis straight up and down. It's just rotating around like that. It's moving around. So that's why I'm using up. And I'm referring to my mouse X, which is right here. So this is my variable and I'm using it right there. And I'm using this variable. So I'm grabbing the transformations of the player. I'm gonna rotate the player and I'm gonna, um, it's gonna be a vector three rotation up and it's gonna be multiplied by this, which means I'm getting all this. I'm getting the axis uh, of the uh, mouse X controls for the um, player and I'll multiply it times the speed we had and then times that delta time. So I'm starting to use my variables and uh, define them and then use them. And of course, this is a uh, class scope. I can use these variables anywhere down here and this is local scope. So this variable here is only good between these two. So you've had questions, well, um, why would we not have everything up here? Because we don't need to use it. We don't need to clog this up or have the computer remembering this if it doesn't have to. In this case, I'm only gonna use it here. So we'll go through this in a little more detail as we do the next one, but you wanna, you know, you should be able to understand it. So it's gonna be a decimal. Um, this is the unity command for grabbing the mouse X and we're gonna get the input get access. We're gonna name it mouse X and then multiply. Um, times our variable here. So we're using this variable here. We're using this variable, um, our player down here, and we're using this variable there. So we can see we're using class scope there, class scope there, and then local scope there. And you can tell we're gonna have one for the Y too. So it's just sort of confusing with the up I know because you're thinking X is not up, X is left to right, but that's just for that rotation. So if you save that and where you put it is on your camera. I tried it on my player first and of course that didn't work. So you wanna put it on your um, camera right there, drag that script on there and look, it's asking for now, see, this is why we make that public, that transform, because it's asking for the player, our player. What is our player? So um, that's when you drag the player in. So the script goes on the camera, and then that transform, uh, when we created it and made it public, is so that we can then um, drag our player in there and apply the script to it. And when we're rotating, Again, I'm rotating around that Y axis. So it's spinning around like there was a rod between the middle of it. It's spinning around that rod. It's going around the Y so we can see it. And I move my camera around so this wood doesn't get in the way. And you know, we know that we can go up here and change that sensitivity. So let's make it something dramatic, like maybe 25. Try it then. And now it's spinning really slow. So that's why we make them public. We can you know, change that sensitivity and get it the way we like to for our game. And so, yeah, this is the, the script goes on there and you have to drag your player this is a slot it's asking you to fill, which we'll be using in our games. So you have to drag it inside there. And notice we're getting the transform, the transformation. In this case, it's rotation. Uh, we could grab the uh, scale or the position also. And let's take one look at... Uh... And then here, public transform our player. So we didn't... Um, to find a value in this because we're going to drag our player inside here. That means it's looking for our player and we need to fill that slot. 
Anyway, that is the script in detail. We'll go through it in a lot more detail because I want to be able to write it from scratch. But um, go ahead and give that a try. One other thing I did is I created a colored light. So my point light, these are pretty cool. Let's zoom in on, I don't know, the workbench. So with your, with your um, light, point light, which is just game object light, point light, you can change the color. So I made mine blue. I can change the intensity. I like that a little bit better. So I can change the intensity. I can change the range, which I probably won't. It's going to diffuse it. That's going to look weird. I sort of like five. But, and you get your color by clicking here. And again, clicking on the wheel wherever you want it, and then double clicking on the spot that you like. I like that color, so I'm not going to change it. So looks pretty cool. We'll put a bunch of more point lights inside there. Fool around with them. There is no right or wrong with any of the colors, any of the uh, lights you put in there, any of the objects you put in there, how you light it, how you uh, put materials on it, et cetera. There is no right or wrong on that. So that's what makes the games different. Anyway, give that a try. And we're gonna go through that script um, line by line. And if you need me, you can look it up a little bit on the internet or look up uh, on the definition section of the uh, thing itself which I think is here, is that the reference? Yeah, you, the reference is right there. And it'll bring up the, uh, the definition. So you have a, if you have a question, just click on that reference section and it will uh, bring it up and you can sort of see what you're doing with it. Anyway, give that a try. If you have any questions, let me know.